Good morning, Captain Hans here. We had just launched out of the small boat harbor out of Buffalo, New York, and we are going to go out. And we're going to try and get some. Uh, we're going to get some walleyes today. Get a nice little uh, walleye dinner going. Uh, right now, we got a, a lot of fish are still spawning, especially at night. You got fish tucked up shallow, but most of the females and a lot of other fish have moved out into the the offshore. Uh, you know. 30 to 40 feet of water area and uh, we're gonna try and get them today in the I mean we're getting a late start but we're gonna get out there and we're gonna bottom bounce them you know we're gonna we're gonna get weights down there and get these fish we're gonna try and get them on little spinners uh, with inline weights whether that be a bottom bouncer or whether that be a little barrel uh, a barrel weight we're gonna we're gonna figure it out so I'll kind of show you guys what we like to do in these circumstances uh, and we'll see how it goes and make sure you like and subscribe if you like this video So here we are, we just got out, like I said, late start. We're just messing around, doing a little scouting for tomorrow. And uh, I mean, we went out and dropped right in 35 feet. We immediately marked, we got some walleyes down here. We got some bait. Uh, that's kind of what we're looking for. I dropped some marks. We're gonna, we're gonna follow that line and we're gonna bottom bounce them. We're gonna, we're gonna get some big, uh, some big weights down there with some nice little spinners and worms and uh, see if they want to give it a try. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be running a bunch of little spinners. We got a bunch of walleye sitting in our, what I call the bottom bouncing drifts, where they're just kind of between 30 and 40 feet down, perfectly, you know, within a foot or two of the bottom, they have been chowing. All the fish that I've been cleaning, full of gobies. So gobies is a big time forage for them. So I'm kind of matching that up with these uh, beads and blades right here. Um, I mean, not that it has to be like a goby. They're eating emerald shiners. They're eating little, you know, they're probably eating everything. Eels and leeches and blah, 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 blah. But we got them down. I, I, I've been liking these uh, dark colored ones right now. Uh, those with a nice little worm have been working great. So I'll show you how we rig these up. So here's what we're doing. People are always like, how do you bottom bounce? Almost all the other guys I know, they bounce with those, those V-shaped pieces of wire with a piece of lead molded onto them. I just... Uh, I grew up, my grandfather did it this way and I kind of just kind of stuck with it. I use these big pieces of lead, okay? Uh, this right here is a six ounce stalk. I have three ounce stalks, I have four ounce stalks, five ounce, six ounce, seven ounce, eight ounce, nine ounce, 10 ounce stalks, okay? That I use for all different things, whether you're fishing deep or shallow. I like my front ones in you know, 30 to 35 feet of water to be sixes and I like running fours off my back. So I run four bottom bouncers. I will also run inlines. So basically that's my rig right there. I have my, my 15 pound mono from my rod go into a snap, which goes to one of these big old 80 pound uh, Thunder Mist T-turn swivels, which then that goes to my lure, okay? And then I have these big old weights that act as my bottom bouncer that I kind of bounce along the bottom so they're really just a big old long inline weight that allows me to uh, drag the bottom with them pretty effectively. So here's the other thing when you are rigging up a spinner with a worm with a night crawler people are always like hey don't worry about it here I'll put the worm on and they're and they just think they're just gonna like slap a worm on here if you put the worm on poorly, you do not catch as many fish. You have to know what you're doing with, with the worm placement, especially with these two, these two single hooks. We're using real sharp little BKK octopus hooks. Um, basically, that front hook, I'm going right through the very tip of the worm, just like so. You can try and thread it up on there, but then if it slides down, you end up with an L. 
I personally don't like an owl. I like it to be running flat. Now the, here's the big mistake. People like to take this hook and they think that they're trying to stop tail biters and, to, and, they, and, they, and they hook it way down by the base of the tail. The problem with that is that then the worm does not run straight. You need the worm to run flat like that. If you mark, if you put it down here and that all of a sudden you got a big loop in your worm and it is not running correctly, that is silly. You do not want it done that way. So don't get greedy. Just put it just past the little band on the worm. Now when that all stretches out in the water, everything's going to be flat and it's going to run straight so that this thing can uh, be down there looking like an eel or whatever it's supposed to look like and uh, hopefully it gets bit. But that's the tip of the day. You got to rig those worms right. You rig the worms wrong, you're not going to have as much success. So we haven't been set up long. We got we got something here. It's a seeming like a walleye. Basically, we're just messing around. The big thing about these walleyes is they got real uh, real soft mouths. So you don't want to yank on them too hard. You don't want to do too much. Uh oh, we're tangled here. Look out! I got him. Fish. There she is. We got a little tangle. We're gonna bear paw her right out here, though. Nice little eater. That's what we're after. Not a giant, but that's what everybody's trying to get out here. Delicious, delicious to eat. But he's kind of small, so I think we'll let this guy go. A few moments later. Yeah, I think we got one here. Oh yeah. We're just gonna slowly come up the outside here. Oh. So here we go, bottom bouncing, such a nice relaxing sport. Choked her down pretty good there. BKK stuck her good. Look at that, another butte. Just pounding them. <laughs> Another lucky one. We're going to let it go. See you, bro. Nice. Big thanks to Captain Bob's Outdoors. Uh, they supply us with everything that we need to get out there and get our fish. And a big thanks to BKK Hooks. They got all the hooks that I need for doing all the different things that I do. And, uh, they're real nice. Oh, some more meats. They love it. Is look at this.
That's what we're talking about right there. So look at this guy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, nicer fish. They're lucky I got baseball and softball tonight for the kitties because that would be a delicious feast. <laughs> and I just don't feel like cutting. But look at that. Lake Erie Gold. There you go. all done for the day we got a bunch of nice walleye bottom bouncing out here in front of buffalo uh we're right off the you know regular community spot off of the off the windmills out here and uh we did uh we we basically got all the fish with inline weights using these big stalks okay yeah you can use the little wire ones with the with the uh with the weight w molded onto them but i like using these um so the, these worked great uh, we got a bunch of fish going on spinners. Um, so uh, with that being said, I think uh, now that we're wrapping up, I'm actually going to show you how to tie one of those spinners. So, um, so check this out. I'm running 15 pound fluorocarbon, okay? Uh, I start off by just taking a piece and I go about a wingspan. So one Hans wingspan is what you're looking for uh, and I know that actually that wingspan is probably a little bigger than most but once we have that piece out I mean once you're done tying knots and snelling things and everything like that it ends up being a you know four or five foot piece of piece of line so now we're gonna take the end of our line I got my BKK hooks. I'm gonna snell these bad boys. You go in the top. See that? You're gonna pinch both lines in the hook. Then we're gonna grab this and we're just gonna make, we're gonna go underneath the eyelet. One, two, three, four, five six seven eight is what i do grab it to control it get your other end go back through the side that's flop how the hook is bent down pull it all through there's your first hook tighten it all up nice and shove that up so you got a nice snelled hook that's the first one nice light wire hook all right now we're going to take the second hook BKK octopus hook. The octopus beak. We're gonna put that through. We're gonna slide that down. I mean, I I just tie it up. I like, you know, three fingers distance between them, you know, just get it kind of like that. I like to try and get them so they're pointed in the same direction. Pinch that line. Go underneath the eyelet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I did it poorly. Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven's fine. Flip it around. Look at this. Of course, while we're tying up, we're just letting the walleye swim away. But hey. All right. Go back through that side of the eyelet. and tighten it down hardest part is over we got our two hooks ready nice and light ready to bounce along that bottom now I've been using been doing real well on these green green and silver perch colored hooks or uh, blades silver back with the with the perch all right so I'm just, I like to try and just make a match a little bit. So we'll take some green beads. You know, yeah, look at this. Look at this beautiful little setup. Man crafting at its finest. Uh, 
Yeah, I'll do seven or eight beads. So we got some greens. I'm gonna throw some blacks. You know, we'll do some silverish looking guys. Silver's been working good. Yeah. Rocking boat. Sometimes it's not easy to do beads, however we're doing it. There we go. I always put a put a black one up here at the top. I I feel like it looks like an eye. Who knows? All right, after my eighth bead, we're gonna put our clevis. I just use the little, the little rolled over little clevises. We're gonna let that run down there. So now we have that, I like to put one on top. Sometimes I like to put something that's a little attention grabbing, like we'll put a yellow one on top. So there we have it. A nice handsome little little spinner rig, you know. There's not a wall on Lake Erie that could could afford to pass that up. So then I like to end it with a nice little size 3 swivel, or uh, not a swivel, a size 3 snap, only to make it easy, quick improved cinch knot. Alright, so now that's ready to be hooked on to any weight that I need to, whether it's a bottom bouncer or an inline weight or whatever. It's a true fish killer. Look at that. Save you a little money too. Good luck out there.